Hello friends, here I am back with a new video on Banking as a Service. Today we are going to look into credit provisioning example to understand the concept of Banking as a Service. And as a part of the discussion, we will also discuss about India Stack, OCEN initiative. We will also have a look to the developer portal of Access Bank. And while ending this video, we will have few questions that would give you more food for thought. So let us start. Now before getting into the example of credit provisioning, I would like to quote Mr. Sharad Sharma who is the co-founder of Wise Spirit Foundation and he summarized one of the banking visions in very few sentences. I am quoting him here. Our goal in the next two years is that we have to enable lending so that even a hawker will be able to take an intraday loan in the morning and pay it back by the evening. This leads us to a very interesting question. How all will this happen? And that leads us to the topic of the video, banking as a service as that is the answer. When we talk about loan process, there are multiple parties involved in it. We have lenders on the left side of the image as we see now, borrowers on the right side and fintech applications such as Sahai app or any other lending service provider app either on the Play Store or App Store. It is OCEN in the example that we have taken, nothing but Open Credit Enablement Network. OCEN is a new credit protocol infrastructure. It will act as a common language connecting lenders or nothing but banks or NBFCs and marketplaces being created by fintech applications. Now OCEN by virtue of APIs is enabling banks to offer their services in a standardized, scalable and secure way. It is a triple S methodology wherein the offerings or the products or the services which are of banks are being exposed to the outside world. Now let us take this example a level up. But before we get into the nitty gritties of this example further, let me quickly touch upon the India stack. The image that you're seeing now is nothing but a set of APIs that are being owned by different entities. And when I say different entities, those entities could be UIDAI or it could be NPCI or it could be any other authority that is being regulated by Reserve Bank of India. Now in the image that is being shown over here, we have Aadhaar UEID, we have DigiLocker, we have EKYC, we have e-signing that could be the e-signing of DigiLocker and we have UPI. Now all these are the services which are needed either for the authentication of the customer or for accessing the data of the customer that has been stored in a DigiLocker or having a consent mechanism wherein the e-signing of DigiLocker takes place by virtue of which the NBFCs or the banks can access the end users data that has already been authorized and signed by the customer completely by the consent mechanism or to take an example if you are a fintech organization you would like that your application should be enabled to perform a UPI transaction by virtue of hitting the core system of the of a, of a specific bank or different banks. Now all these services are to be enabled. You being a fintech you cannot of course directly interact with a bank because every bank have their own core system which are quite complicated in nature. Few are in mainframes, few are trying to uh, move up the ladder when it comes to the technology upgradation and hence it is not standardized. Now India stack is an initiative towards standardization by virtue of APIs by way of which all these pointers that we talked about becomes standardized, scalable and secure for fintech to use for the offerings that they want to give to the end users. So let me gather your attention back to OCEN which is Open Credit Enablement Network and also to the example that we quoted when we started with the video. A hawker who takes the loan in the morning and is in a situation to repay it by the evening. Now all this has to be made paperless of course if it has to be that quick. There should be an ecosystem wherein everything could be either digitized or digitalized so that the integration between multiple layers is frictionless 
and thirdly of course it has to be secure by virtue of the india stack guidelines that we just now discussed about now let us take it a level up by combining our knowledge around india stack provisioning of services via api and combine it with an example which is around loan provisioning so let us start i would like to take your attention to the innermost ring that is shown on the image and the inner ring innermost ring is all about the end user the end user needs a loan the end user agrees to share the data the end user sees the loan offers that have been given by multiple banks or nbfcs the end user accepts the offers and then the payment process and then ultimately the repayment of the loan the middle ring is about the architecture which is needed at the fintech application side which is enabling the marketplace so credit marketplace application is there the consent mechanism has to be there by the way consent mechanism we discuss in one of the videos uh, around account aggregator so i request if you have not had a look to that yet uh, please go and have a look to the account aggregator video as well there has to be a credit marketplace that has been created by the fintech application so the point that we that i'm trying to drive over here is that the middle layer is all about the fintech enablement of the marketplace now the outermost layer of, that we see over here is all around apis those apis could be around the india stack we talked about ekyc we talked about digi locker we talk about the authorization uh, by virtue of api and having consent mechanism is in in place is all what the india stack is going to take care of now there is another stack or uh, a layer of api which has to be provisioned by bank or nbfcs who are going to be the lender in this ecosystem there has to be api by virtue of which the banks or nbfcs can show the loan offers uh, there should be uh, api by way of which the banks and nbfcs can access the digi locker information and can run the algorithm to come out with the best offer for the for the customer or the end user and of course there has to be api so that the transactions by means of upi or the repayment of the loan can be initiated seamlessly now with this information it becomes easier to understand this image as you can see banks is the bottom most layer who have all the products and offerings and they are also ensuring that regulations are being taken care of there is a middle layer which has been given over here as a middleware is the application or a stack which is enabling all the apis or a common language that sets the ground for fintechs and banks to interact now this is uh, uh, this is bank as a service enabler is what we are calling and of course the topmost layer is the ecosystem where all the fintechs are lying ensuring that they are getting all the information from different banks and nbfcs they are aggregating and segregating them to make it tailored for the end user and this entirely forms the ecosystem which is enabling banking as a service or creating a business out of banking as a service which is a win win situation not only for banks but also for fintechs and of course for the end user let us quickly have a look to the developer portal of access bank we are taking access bank as an example and you will observe that multiple banks uh, have this page by way of which you can understand that how the enablement of apis or the services of banks will be exposed to the outside world there is step 1 you can self sign up the page you can browse the api products around multiple offerings of bid payment or collection or balance and transaction reporting and multiple modules that banks have you can subscribe and test the api product in sandbox environment this is a very important point because then before putting anything into the production you can test it in the uat environment if it is working fine fine or not and that is step 4 wherein you can apply for uat access if everything goes fine multiple banks are also enabling you to give uh, advisory around the use cases that you want to put forward and helping you to take it to the production by the way this is not happening only in india we have banks like solaris bank which calls itself a tech company with a banking license most of the banks have now started calling themselves an information technology company rather than calling themselves as a bank this is the paradigm shift that has occurred because of the initiatives like india stack 
or open banking or PSD2 initiatives in European region. With this, I request to please take out some time to research more about India stack, who owns different pillars of India stack, account aggregator versus OCEN, and why incumbent banks are struggling to utilize the business of banking as a service. With this, I put an end to the video. Please do like, subscribe, and share the video for more such topics on latest trends on banking and stay connected. Thank you.